we've got the position as a function of time, the velocity as a function of time, and the acceleration as a function of time. We already showed, if we talk about the cosine, we have one that looks like this. The velocity then is going to look, and I want to make sure I get this right. I'm going to draw vertical bless you lines here so that I can have them all lined up correctly. Then the velocity is going to be like this. And the acceleration is going to just be the inverse of the position. It's going to look something like that. Those are going to be the overall shapes of the graphs. Now, if we look at specific positions that the object is located in, actually move that over a little bit. Let's say we move it over from the equilibrium position over to here. So here is our equilibrium position. If we then let go of it, it's going to slide, yeah. slide to our left, and eventually be back in the equilibrium position right here. Then it's going to slide through the equilibrium position and it will eventually be over here, where this is the amplitude, and this is also the amplitude. I'm going to call these positions 1, 2, and 3. In our graphs, these are going to be positions 1, 2, 3. But it's then going to come back to position 2, and then go back to position 1. Notice that it starts here, position one, two, three, two, one, and then one, two, three, two, and one. We now know a lot about where the object has its maximum velocity and its maximum uh, acceleration. Please give me an example where we know where it has the maximum velocity. Position two. Position two. You can see that. We'll talk about the absolute absolute value here. Clearly, it would actually have the minimum velocity. Here, it would have the maximum. But usually, when we talk about this, we're talking about the magnitude. So the magnitude of the velocity is greatest at position two, where it's either moving to the left or to the right. And we've already figured out that maximum velocity is equal to um, a times omega. Okay, what do we know about the velocity at positions 1 and 3? You should. True, they're not in equilibrium, but I asked what's, what, are their, what do we know about their velocity, Sarah Jane? They're equal to zero. They're equal to zero. Notice at positions 1 and 3, the velocity is equal to zero. So here, the velocity is equal to zero. Here, the velocity is equal to zero. It makes sense because it's turning around. It's switching directions. It's going from a positive to a negative velocity or from a negative to a positive velocity. What about accelerations? What do we know about the accelerations at either one, <coughs> two, or three? Emily? Would they be zero? Would they be zero at? One and three. The, would the accelerations be zero at one and three? Look at your graph. No. There's zero at two. The acceleration is zero at position two. Why is the acceleration of the mass spring system zero at position two? Uh, Travis? Um, because the direction of the force is not changing. I'm sorry, so the direction of the force is? It's changing direction. It's changing direction, therefore the force of the spring is actually zero at that location. Right? So the force of the spring, that which causes the acceleration, is zero because the x, the displacement from the equilibrium position, is equal to zero. So the force is zero, so the acceleration is zero at position two. What do we know about the acceleration at position three, Bill? One and three? Um, the accelerations at positions one and three, or technically the magnitude of the accelerations at positions one and three. No, it's important to understand, and uh, we're going to put this down here in big block letters. <laughs> what am I going to do to this UAM? Destroy. I'm going to cross it out. Right. Very com it's very common for people to try to use UAM with simple harmonic motion. The acceleration is not constant in simple harmonic motion. The acceleration is changing throughout, which is not constant acceleration. Please tell me, Silva, what do we know about the acceleration at positions one and three? Well, that's going to be its highest because it's proportional to the distance. 
It's at its maximum uh, displacement from the equilibrium position, which is the amplitude. Therefore, the acceleration is going to be a maximum. We've already figured out it's A omega squared. The acceleration equals A times omega squared.